You are being placed into conference. The conference has been muted. La conférence a été mise en mode discrétion. Good evening. My name is Kevin Ross, and on behalf of the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission, I'd like to thank you for joining us today for this webinar on the White Shells Laboratory License Renewal. The goal of this webinar is to inform our stakeholders of the upcoming hearing in October 2019, during which Canadian Nuclear Laboratories' request for the relicensing of White Shell Laboratories will be considered. Canadian Nuclear Laboratories, or CNL, has also proposed a change in decommissioning strategy for the White Shell Reactor 1, going from the decommissioning approach of dismantlement to in-situ decommissioning. CNL's proposal for in-situ decommissioning of WR1 is undergoing a separate regulatory review process under both the Canadian Environmental Assessment Act 2012 and the Nuclear and Safety Control Act. Hence, the proposed in-situ strategy for decommissioning of the WR1 facility is outside the scope of this license renewal. Throughout the presentation, you can ask questions about the information presented today using the email address cncwebinar-webinar.ccsn at canada.ca. Time permitting, I will address most of your questions at the end of the presentation. Any questions not answered today will be addressed via email. Please note that we will not discuss the contents of the Commission member document that CNFC staff prepared for the upcoming White Shell Laboratories hearing today. Our aim is to provide you with information that will help you navigate through the document and facilitate your participation in the hearing. This webinar will focus on how the CNFC regulates nuclear facilities, discuss Canadian Nuclear Laboratories' request to renew the decommissioning license for White Shell Laboratories, present an overview of CNFC's licensing process, and provide details on the upcoming public hearing and how you can participate in it. The CNSC is Canada's nuclear regulator. Under the Nuclear Safety and Control Act, NSCA, the CNSC regulates all nuclear-related activities in Canada and sets out regulatory requirements and expectations for their safe use. Specifically, the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission is mandated to regulate the use of nuclear energy and materials to protect health, safety, security, and the environment. Implement Canada's international commitments on the peaceful use of nuclear energy and disseminate objective scientific, technical, and regulatory information to the public. Through requiring that nuclear-related activities in Canada be conducted under a license issued by the CNSC, the CNSC ensures that these activities are conducted safely and in compliance with regulatory requirements. The CNSC is headed by an independent commission. The commission is CNSC's decision-making body and makes licensing decisions, including those for all major nuclear facilities in Canada. The CNSC reports to partners to the Minister of Natural Resources on the Commission's activities under the Act. Neither the Minister nor the Governor and Council has a role in the CNSC's decision-making or the power of appeal. Its decisions are reviewable only by the Federal Court of Canada. The CNSC's regulatory framework consists of laws passed by Parliament that govern the regulation of Canada's nuclear industry and regulations, licenses, and documents that the CNSC uses to regulate the industry. The CNSC's commission has up to seven appointed permanent members whose decisions are supported by more than 900 employees. These employees review applications for licenses according to regulatory requirements, make recommendations to the commission, and enforce compliance with the Nuclear Safety and Control Act and any license conditions imposed by the commission. The commission makes decisions after considering all evidence presented from interveners, from licensed applicants, and from staff. The Commission is supported by scientific, technical, and professional staff, who we shall refer to as CNC staff throughout this webinar. We are highly skilled nuclear professionals who are committed to safeguarding the health, safety, and security of our fellow Canadians and our environment. Our diverse staff is made up of scientists and engineers, corporate professionals, new graduates, students, and alumni. CNC staff carry out the day-to-day -day work of the CNC, which includes making recommendations to the Commission, developing the regulatory framework, reviewing submissions and applications according to regulatory requirements, verifying licensee compliance with regulatory requirements, and if necessary, taking enforcement actions in accordance with the Nuclear Safety and Control Act, its regulations, and applicable licenses. 
The CNC regulates all nuclear facilities in Canada, which include all phases of the nuclear fuel cycle, from uranium mining to milling and processing, operation of nuclear reactors, and management of radioactive waste. The regulation of other nuclear technologies, such as nuclear medicine, nuclear research, industrial uses, and dosimetry services also fall under the mandate of the CNSC. Under the Nuclear Safety and Control Act, NSCA, conduct of nuclear-related activities must be authorized with a license from the CNSC. Those wishing to carry out activities regulated under the NSCA must first obtain a license and certification from the CNSC. In order to obtain a license, applicants must demonstrate that they are qualified to carry out the proposed activities and are able to carry out the activities in a way that protects the health, safety, and security of its workers, the Canadian public, and protects the environment. The CNSC establishes a regulatory framework which provides clear requirements and expectations for licensees and applicants. Once a license is obtained, CNSC staff conduct compliance activities to ensure that the authorized activities are carried out safely and regulatory requirements continue to be met. The CNSC is responsible for setting appropriate requirements, verifying compliance with those requirements, and making objective, independent, science-based decisions. The CNSC uses a risk-informed regulatory approach to plan and carry out licensing and compliance activities in order to establish appropriate regulatory control that is commensurate with the activities and risks involved. The CNSC's rigorous, multifaceted regulatory oversight which includes on-site inspections, desktop reviews, and annual oversight reports discussed in public meetings, ensures that licensees are operating safely and adhering to their license conditions. When a licensee does not comply with regulations or license conditions, CNC staff determine the appropriate enforcement action to be taken. Consistent with international principles of nuclear regulation and operation, licensees are responsible for the safe operation of their facilities. This responsibility cannot be delegated or passed onto any other party. In Canada, this means that licensees are responsible to manage their operations to ensure the continued protection of health, safety, security, and the environment. In all cases, licensees remain responsible for the safe use of nuclear substances and prescribed equipment, as well as the implementation of their operations programs, all of which are reviewed by CNSC staff to ensure they remain effective and up to date with regulatory requirements. Now we will focus our attention to White Shell Laboratories, which comprises of both nuclear and non-nuclear facilities. This slide provides an aerial view of the main campus of White Shell Laboratories. As you can see, there are a large number of structures and facilities that previously supported the research activities of the White Shell Laboratories. Whitechell is currently in the process of decommissioning and demolishing these facilities under a commission-issued license, which expires on December 31, 2019. As mentioned earlier, the relicensing application does not include in-situ decommissioning of Whitechell Reactor 1. The Whitechell Laboratory site is located approximately 100 kilometers northeast of Winnipeg, near the town of Pinawa, Manitoba. It was established in 1963 by Atomic Energy of Canada Limited, or AECL. AECL operated Whitechell Laboratories for approximately 40 years, until 2002, when AECL applied for and was granted a decommissioning license by the Commission. It was at this point that Whitechell Laboratories became the first research and development site under a decommissioning license in Canada. In October 2014, the Commission approved the transfer of the license from AECL to Canadian Nuclear Laboratories. CNL remains the licensee responsible for the site today and is the entity that has applied for renewal of the site license. Historically, there was a broad range of research conducted at the Whiteshell site. Previous activities at the Whiteshell site included nuclear research and development, work on the effects of radiation on the environment, and technology demonstration programs such as the development of dry storage technology for the storage of radiated fuel and the slowpoke demonstration reactor. A key feature of the Whiteshore Laboratories 
was White Shell Reactor 1, or WR1. WR1 was a low-power research reactor, which operated from 1965 to 1985. The fuel was removed from the core in 1985, and all fuel had been transferred from the irradiated fuel base to dry storage in the concrete canister storage facility by 1995. The reactor has been shut down now for 34 years. Currently at the site, the only activities related to decommissioning, such as site remediation and waste management, are taking place. All of the decommissioning work is conducted in accordance with detailed decommissioning plans that reflect waste management strategies. The overarching strategy for decommissioning was accepted by the Commission. As detailed decommissioning plans are submitted, they are reviewed and accepted by CNSC staff if it is determined that they meet regulatory requirements. CNO has been safely conducting decommissioning activities at White Shell Laboratories over the current license period. Before discussing the decommissioning license renewal request, let us briefly consider the decommissioning history for this facility. As mentioned earlier, in 2002, AECL was granted the first decommissioning license. This license has been renewed twice so far, once in 2008 and once in 2018. Each time, the decommissioning time frame significantly advanced, with the current approximate site closure being 2024. The existing nuclear research and test establishment decommissioning license for the White Shield Laboratories expires in December 2019. Therefore, CNO has submitted a license renewal application. The license request is for a 10-year license period starting from January 2020 and ending in December 2029. Once again, the proposed in-situ strategy for decommissioning the WR1 facility is outside the scope of the license renewal. The CNSC licensing process for renewal includes a thorough assessment of the application submission and a verification of the licensee's compliance performance. Through the review process, the CNSC determines whether the applicant is qualified and has made adequate provisions for the protection of health and safety of person and the environment. Applicants must also demonstrate the required measures to maintain national security and implement Canada's international obligations for the peaceful use of nuclear energy. For Wetchel Laboratories, CNSC staff also completed an Environmental Protection Review Report. The purpose of this Environmental Protection Review is to report the outcome of our review of licensing and environmental compliance activities conducted by the licensee. This review serves to assess whether CNO has made and will continue to make adequate provisions to protect the environment and health and safety of persons at the Weichel Laboratory site. The review of the application is the responsibility of CNSC staff. However, the decision to grant a license is a power given to the Commission, not CNSC staff. When our review is complete, we provide a recommendation to the Commission regarding a licensing decision. The outcome of our review is contained in a document called the Commission Member Document, which contains our recommendations to the Commission. Technical assessments that CNSC staff conduct to support regulatory decision making is anchored in a framework of 14 technical areas, otherwise known as safety and control areas, SCAs, and several other non-technical areas, which I will discuss later. The SCA framework is designed to allow CNSC staff to evaluate all applications consistently and provide a platform to ensure that we review all aspects relevant to safety and security thoroughly using a risk-informed approach. A CMD is a vehicle used to present technical information and regulatory recommendations to the Commission. It is any document that goes before the Commission. In the CMD, CNSC staff will present findings from license application reviews and licensees' past performance. CNSC staff will also develop recommendations and communicate these to the Commission via the CMD. Information in the CMD is organized using the same 14 safety and control areas that were used to conduct the technical assessment. This CMD for White Shore Renewal is available on the CNSC website. The CMD includes the Environmental Protection Review Report. The Commission hears the oral and written submissions from CNSC staff, the applicant, CNL in this case, members of the public, other stakeholders, provincial and federal government departments, and Indigenous groups and takes into consideration all the information it is presented to help it reach a decision. The number for the CMD prepared by CNC staff is CMD19-H4. 
As mentioned earlier, the information in CNC staff's CMD is divided into the 14 SCAs. Under each SCA, there is a table for performance rating for the last five years for that SCA. There are three types of ratings, fully satisfactory, FS, satisfactory, SA, and below expectations, BE. As an example, the slide shows the performance rating table for management system SCA, where White Shell Laboratories received a satisfactory rating from 2014 to 2018. In addition to the yearly performance rating, the CMD also contains an overall performance rating for each SCA. The CMD also contains a discussion on licensee and CNSC activities pertaining to each SCA, the regulatory requirements that inform those activities, recommendations for future improvements, and conclusion on CNL's implementation of that SCA at White Shell Laboratories. In addition to the 14 technical areas, there are some non-technical areas that the CNSC considers. One such area is Indigenous engagement and consultation. As an agent of the Government of Canada and as Canada's nuclear regulator, the CNSC recognizes and understands the importance of consulting and building relationships with Canada's Indigenous peoples and communities. The CNSC leads a flexible and coordinated whole-of-government approach to improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the engagement and consultation process. The CNSC requires licensees to engage with potentially affected Indigenous groups early in the development and throughout the life of a project. Furthermore, CNSC invites Indigenous peoples to participate in regulatory reviews and share relevant traditional land use practices and knowledge and project-specific concerns. Ultimately, the goal is to build a positive, long-term relationship with Indigenous peoples in Canada. This webinar is also a part of our outreach efforts related to the White Shell Laboratories relicensing. The CNSC's public outreach is an opportunity to provide the public with impartial information on our role as a regulator and to answer questions directly. This year alone, we have conducted six outreach activities, including information booths at the Loch Dubani Trade Fair, Pinoa Birthday Celebrations, and the White Shell Laboratories Open House. There are two more activities scheduled for the latter part of this year. In addition, in 2017, we hosted CNSC Meet the Regulator sessions in Winnipeg, Loch Devaney, and Pinawa. The CNSC also requires CNL and other licensees to have their own public information and disclosure program. The primary goal of this program, as it relates to licensed activities, is to ensure that information relating to the health, safety, and security of persons and the environment and other issues associated with the life cycle of nuclear facilities are effectively communicated to the public. This information promotes transparency and improves the public's understanding of the licensed activities and operations. The program includes a commitment to and protocol for ongoing timely communication of information related to the licensed facility during the course of the licensing period. The Commission makes decisions on the licensing of major nuclear facilities through a public hearing process. For the White Shell Laboratories license renewal application, a one-part public hearing will be held. This hearing will take place this year on the 2nd and 3rd of October at the Loch Devaney Community Center. During a public hearing, the Commission will consider information provided by the applicant, CNC staff's recommendation, and any interventions from the public on the matter. The Commission bases their decisions on scientific evidence heard during the hearing process. Applicant and CNSC staff documents can be found on the CNSC's website. The steps required to find them on the website will be discussed shortly. Members of the public, Indigenous groups, and other stakeholders who have an interest or expertise in the matter being considered before the Commission, or who have information that may be useful to the Commission in coming to a decision, can formally participate as interveners in public hearings. The public hearing gives involved parties and members of the public an opportunity to be heard before the Commission. Interventions may be made in either of Canada's official languages via either a written submission or a written submission accompanied by an oral presentation during the hearing. At the conclusion of the presentation, Commission members may ask the presenter, CNSC staff, or licensee questions regarding the presentation. 
The deadline to submit interventions is September 3, 2019. The Commission may also accommodate participation in its proceedings by teleconference or video conference. Arrangements for remote participation must be made through the Commission Secretariat. More information on how to participate can be found on the CNSC website. Furthermore, the CNSC offers online videos, webcasts, of its public proceedings. You can tune in live on the day of the hearing or watch the archived webcasts at a later date. You can also follow the highlights of the proceedings live on the CNSC Twitter page. The CMDs prepared by staff and CNL are both cur currently available on CNSC's website. There are many ways to find the CMDs from the website, but I will now describe the shortest route to find the documents. To start, type Download Hearing Submissions 2019 on the search bar of the CNSC website. You would then select the third link from the search results that reads Download Hearing Documents dash Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. This will take you to a new page where you should select the second bullet point under the title October 2-3, 2019 Public Hearings. This will open up a pop-up menu from where you can download the CNC staff's CMD and CNL's renewal application as indicated on the slide. Any interventions received relating to the hearing will be available on the CNC website. Once again, if you choose to intervene at the hearing, please submit your interventions by September 3, 2019. Thank you for joining this webinar today. I hope you found this presentation informative and useful. For more information on the CNSD, uh, you can visit our website at nuclearsafety.gc.ca. Uh, the CNSD can also be found on multiple social media platforms, such as Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I will now uh, answer any questions that are available. If you haven't already, please ask any questions you may have about the contents of this presentation using the email address CNSC dot webinar dash webinar dot ccsn at canada dot ca. So I will stay on the line for a few minutes in case uh, there are any questions.